Hey YouTube, Mike here. How are we all doing today? Hope we all had a safe and productive week. All right, today's video is going to be on cleaning, removing and cleaning and putting back in the Navion flame rod and igniter assembly. Now, all tankless seaters have this pretty much the same thing. Some have a little bit of a different configuration, but they all kind of work the same. When the unit is called, when water is called to be heated, it sends a signal from the PC board up to the igniter. The igniter will then light the flame, just like your stove. And then there's flame rods in there that sense the flame so that if there's a problem, it shuts everything down. But with normal usage, depending on where the unit is, it is located on the structure, whether it's an interior or an exterior, also will depend on how dirty that could get. Now, you're gonna get what they call ignition failure or flame failure. It's pretty much, it could be the same thing as far as like a code E012, which is flame failure, but that also could mean that the unit tried to ignite, it couldn't ignite, and it went into safety. It'll do it a certain amount of times, and then it'll go into safety, give the code. Now, we're not gonna go over other, we're gonna hit that in for future videos, but this one we're going to say that we have dirty flame rods. Now, how does a flame rod get dirty? All right, either your venting is kinda not correct, your um, gas, you know, propane, especially propane, it's all different throughout the different states and the world. It's all, it's propane, but it's not the same. There's, there's some additives put into it. Also, it's the air gas mixture that could be off. Or if it was outside and it's gotten some debris, you know, like just, you know, normal dust and, and, and stuff that happens outside, and it could also come from an exterior, interior unit through the air intake because that all then gets um, mixed up here on the burner. And then remember the burner's up at the top and you have your flame rod assembly and everything here. So we're going to just say for this video, we got to remove and clean the flame rods. All right, let me get this camera into a little better position so you can see and my big body ain't in the way. Now, if you notice here, here's a flame rod on an NPN. You got igniter and you have the um, actual uh, sensor. Here you have two, these two gray wires that come from the igniter down to here and here is your sensor. And then on the NHW here, this is very, it's pretty much the same as the um, NPN. It's got your igniter and sensor. So here we have three pieces. All right, what do you do? First thing you do is you unplug the unit. You can shut the gas off. You do not have to shut the water off. But if you unplug this unit or any unit, nothing's going to work. But if you feel like you want to shut the gas off, but you really don't have to. But make sure you unplug the unit or shut the switch, turn off the switch, shut the knife switch, pull out the knife switch, because you can either have a shut off or a pull out one if it's an exterior, or if there's nothing, shut the breaker off. And then test it. Make sure you have no power. All right. Now, you got no power, the thing is off. First thing you want to remove is your sensor wire. Then you want to remove your igniters. Just pull straight up. Now, they may come out of the boot and fall on the floor like this one did. But you want to try to keep this inside. And it goes in fairly easy. Of course, the older ones, you know, as it gets older, you want it through there like that. Okay, so now, your wiring is off. I'm going to just put that to the side. All right. You have your sight window. Then you have your flame rod assembly. The beauty about this one here, when you see it, Navion, it's one big assembly. Now, you got your two screws. 
I like to put the screws. Navian's upper between the primary and secondary heat exchanger has a lip. I like to put the screws right there on the lip. You do have your magnetic tray. Remember, you could bring your magnetic tray. But this right here, you ain't losing them. Take out your second screw. Now, once you get this second out, it's going to start to want to fall. <clears throat> now, if you have your parts kit, your NPE parts kit, you will have a whole igniter assembly in there just in case there is a problem with it. So now, once you have it, all you do is pull it right out. There is a gasket. It's like almost like a, fi it's a fibrous gasket. It stays on the unit. It's not like other ones that actually have the uh, like a felt or high temperature gasket. So here is your, that's your mounting. I put that right there also. Now here is your flame rod assembly. One piece. Now, you're going to get black or white coatings on this. Now, cleaning it. Let's just back the camera up a little bit. And then we'll come back in a minute. All right. So cleaning it. You can use abrasive paper, which is kind of like emery cloth. You can use a very light sandpaper. You can use a dollar bill. In an emer if you don't have anything, you could use a dollar bill to clean this off. Now, on certain instances, you may need to use a Dremel with a wire wheel. But in Navian's case, on the right hand side, so the side of the PC board, and I've shown this on many, many other videos, you know, you get the conversion kit. So it comes natural gas, you get the propane and the high altitude natural gas on the left hand side. On the right hand side, you get this packet. In the packet is O-rings. You get new O-rings, gas, servo, uh, condensate drain. You get a fuse that's for the PC board. You get actually a new window. Sat there in the plastic. And it actually has, see, and it's got the whole model, it's got, a, it's got a parts number and everything on it. But, inside this packet, Navion gives you some cleaning pad to clean the flame rods. So, if you do not have that on your truck, or... You know, just say you show up to a relative's house that has one. You have this. So, to clean it, just give it a little fold. Now, again, you want to use some type of an abrasive pad. You could use some Scotch-Brite. So, that's the stuff you use to clean copper. You could use the dollar bill. You can use the wheel with the Dremel. You do not use a knife, a file, a scissor, nothing sharp, nothing pointed. You do not use that. You're going to gouge this. You do not want to gouge this. There's also a gap between these two that needs to be set. What I would do, and what I have done, is I have actually gauged this gap. So I know what this gap is. Now, I don't know it in my head. It's in my truck. But gauge it. Now, you want to clean, so you just want to run the Scotch-Brite all over to take off the black or the white coating on it. Like that. Just run it up and down. Run it up and down. Now, in some instances, you may find that it's, got, it, it's on there like barnacles on the bottom of a boat. So you want to use your Dremel, set it down at three, and then just hit it very softly. Hit it to get off 
that coating. Now, of course, this is brand new. Shut up. Jesus. This is brand new, so it's, it's nice. So take a look and see. That's what it wants to look like. Now, you want to inspect the ceramic. You want to, that's why it's very important. To, now, of course, outside, if it drops, the chance of it if it's falling in like the mulch or the grass, it's not going to break. Inside units, you drop this on the concrete floor of the garage or in a, a mechanical room, yeah, it's going to break. So you want to inspect all the ceramic and you also want to clean off the actual contact points. So just give it a good cleaning with your abrasive paper. And it's always good when you're done, put it back in the bag because if you've got to come back for this, it's always there. So let's say the bag's up there. All right, so now this is all nice and clean and you want to have a rag with you. I got one right here, hold on, sorry. You want to have a little rag with you or some, a shop towel or whatever, you want to take off any dust that you have made while cleaning it. If you happen to have a compressor on the truck, blow it off with air. All right? So, put this right here. All right, so let's get this camera back. All right, putting this back in. Just remember... If you remember that the actual contact points are facing up, because remember everything is coming from down, and that your igniter is to the right and your sensor is to the left. You want to take your um, actual mount. Now, the mount has a flat side, and then it has this raised side, where the edges are raised and the screws actually sit flush within it. Then you have this recess that the actual igniter assembly sits into. See, it sits into it. And you wanna get this back in. Now, it pretty much will hold itself in, as you can see. You get your first screw. And then I just push that in and I hold with my thumb to center it. We seeing it? Yep, we're seeing it. Okay, don't tighten it all up. Now you see how my, my screwdriver tip is nice and magnetic. And now you get the second screw in. Now, you don't have only, just snug it. You don't need to over tighten it. It will actually seal itself. And that's it, that's all you gotta go. Now, to get your igniters back in, don't try, oh, it doesn't matter which one goes where, don't try to put the boot on and then push it. You can do it. The easiest way, and I'll try to get it on camera, is to push it all the way down, and you see how I'm pulling the actual stake on out of the rubber? Push it course if nothing's in the way and I just lost it now push it in okay so now that one's on push your boot in and this thing is being a pain in the neck then you take this one same thing it bottomed out pull it out of the rubber out of that little angle piece get it on to its now push down and then turn the rubber right back on. There we go. Now put your sensor on. And there you go. You're all back in shape. And that's how it should look when you're done. Wait a second here. So that's how it looks. So let me see. Now that we're closer, I'll pull this one out. All right. Let's see. Yep. I want to make sure we're seeing it. All right. So now you see you got it. You have it sticking down at the bottom. 
You see how I'm pulling it out of the rubber? Then you just get it right onto, and then push the wire down. Use two fingers, two parts of your thumbs, and then push on that. Don't try to push this straight down, man. It's, it's tough. It's tough. That, that's the best way to do it. The older this gets, the softer it gets, the easier it gets. That's the beauty about it. So that's that. So that would be cleaning your flame rod assembly. Now plug the unit back in. Start it up. Test it. Go in. Take out your error code. Erase it. Or you could leave it. Remember it stores 12 codes. So you'll always know. But I carry an actual... Um, I got a rock on my shoe. I carry a sheet when I come to every tankless problem. No matter what brand it is. And I put the whole full address. Oh, you know what? I'll post this on a video to show you. Because that's a great idea to have. The way I set this up. Where I set up name, address, date, phone number, who I contacted, make, model, serial number, what the problem was, what the code was, parts, yada, yada, yada. So I know. I write it all down. I put it in that file. I know if there's a problem in the future, I look it up and say, oh, on this date, this happened. So if you want to, you could erase the code. But sometimes I leave the code in to know if, you know, if I get there or if my son or son-in-law goes there. All right, you two. Um, I hope this was helpful. Again, I'd like to really thank everybody that has subscribed. I am I'm closing in on 20,000 uh, followers, which is great. I, I, I love it. Thank you. I really, for my family, to you. Thank you very much. All right. Um, down below in the description, I'll just put basic stuff that you need. And as you can see, all I used was a screwdriver. And, of course, you know, dollar bill or the uh, emery cloth or the, the dreadnought if you needed it. Um, I'll put down, uh, you know, follow us on Facebook now. My, my company is on uh, Instagram, TikTok. I'll have everything down below. I'll put in my website. Uh, I do have a Patreon that will help support the channel for future videos. And um, I still, with the consulting, just message me and I'll if, let you know what it would cost for the problem. I mean, you're, you're looking at, for, for me to walk through a whole job, send your photos, uh, excuse me, drawings, look at the whole job, talk to the contractor, talk to the plumber. The most you're looking at is like 250 and I will, I, I'm with you right through to the end, and I still look at it and call you way after to make sure everything's going well. All right, YouTube. Thank you again for all the likes, subscribes, the comments. Hit that bell in the corner to give you notifications. And um, you all be safe out there, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.